Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm the Gnarly Gnome. This is Scentsy Brewcast. It's the voice of Scentsy Craft. We're back. I know it's been a little while since uh, we released an episode. Uh, just, I blame my kids. That's uh, the honest truth. They don't listen to the show yet, so I can do that. They uh, they make life very difficult sometimes, and things have been busy. I had to build a fence. Uh, lesson learned. Pay somebody to build the fence for you. Don't, don't build your own fence. It is miserable work, especially this time of year where it's hot outside. I made my wife help me. Uh, I don't think she's ever going to forgive me for that. It's It's been busy. <laughs> but uh, I had to. I had to get out here. Uh, we've been trying to get this show put together for a very long time. You guys have been trying to get this place put together for a very long time. Uh, Glend. All right. So is it Glendale House Brewery or is it Glendale House? Or as I keep like kind of morphing into this Gl- Glendale house. That <laughs> it's, one. It's that it. one. That it's, one. <laughs> it's Glendale house. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a great name for a brewery, especially when you see what you guys have done here uh, with the space. It makes perfect sense. Uh, welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is uh, in, in the heart of Glendale. It is a converted house. Um, that now is a tap room with a, uh, a three barrel brew house sitting out back in a uh, it's it's a new building but it, it's kind of like a garage kind of sitting yeah, out it, back. It's, we made it to look like the uh, like like the barn that's back there. So uh, I- introduce yourselves before we get too far into this. Tell people uh, who you are and kind of what your your role within the uh, the brewery is. I'm Laura Morgan and I will be making the pizzas. Mm, I love love <laughs> pizza and beer. <laughs> And I'm uh, Scott Morgan. I'll be making the beer and uh, building the fences and putting the place together. <laughs> and I'll probably have to help with the fences. <laughs> Next time I have a fence to build, I know who to call. <laughs> yeah, definitely do. It was so miserable. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> um, uh, so let's start kind of from the beginning. How did this, how did this idea come about? Where, uh, where did it birth from? Was it, did it come from home brewing? Did it come from just the, uh, the love of Glendale? How, how did this happen? Well, uh, the, the, the big thing is, I guess our, our backstory, our um, uh, uh, evil origin story, was that uh, we, we lived in this house and, and we did all kinds of work on it and, uh, uh, and we loved it and we grew our kids up here. And then uh, Glendale decided to allow a UDF to move in or yeah. a, a mini mart. Um, and, uh, and, and it kind of... Uh, sucked all the fun out of everything and uh so it made it not a super great place to to live anymore and it kind of took away that that kind of small town house, vibe yeah. That, it did. Uh, that yeah yeah and uh uh but anyway you know we uh we went through a process of uh, uh learned how to protest things and and uh and it was kind of fun you know <laughs> <laughs> you know showing up and trying to rally against the machine a little bit the machine of uh Mini marts, um, uh, and so anyway, but we, but we, you know, we uh, we put up our uh, our powerpoints and we lost that fight because uh, Glendale just basically said, oh, "We love ice cream." <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't fault them for that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but a nice little like mom and pop kind of ice cream store would have been great. <laughs> yeah, sure, right? Yeah, creamy whip or anything like that. Um, even little graders would have been fine. <laughs> right. So, uh, so through that whole process, and we didn't even know it. Um, but you know, maybe going back to when this place uh, may or may not have been a dairy farm, uh, it's zoned commercial, and so we said, "Well, uh, let's uh, let's start a business." And and we love to brew beer, and and we love to drink beer, and and uh, and go to the breweries and stuff like that. So you know, it was either going to be coffee house or uh, a brewery, and uh, and and then we just started. You know, we drew up some plans and started talking to people, and and. Um, uh, it, it kind of took off from there, and and uh, and Glendale. We kept thinking, oh, we'll get to uh, some hurdle, you know, mm-hmm. and, and uh, 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 just challenging ourselves with, okay, this is the next hurdle. And then we actually got our like TTB uh, application, which is you know your federal permit, and got that in early because we thought there'd be you know some big hurdles with that. No right. hurdles, right? You know, and and then and then we went to Glendale. Uh, well, we had this crazy idea. We're going to make our place into a brewery, you know, and and. and no neighbors. All the neighbors were very supportive of it. They were very supportive. And we're like, oh, crap. <laughs> no, no, we really got to do this thing. When I first saw that there was a license that was, that was pulled for this to become a brewery, I was talking to somebody about it. And it's like, oh, there's no way that's going to happen. There's no way Glendale let a brewery come. Like, there's, there's no way. And I'm like, yeah. oh, no, I think this is actually going to happen. Well, the floodgates were open with <laughs> yeah. ice cream and gasoline. 
So uh, I guess they'll let anything. Um, but any, you know, that's what that's what we keep joking about is, uh, uh, you know, if your village gives you lemons, then you make beer. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, talking about beer, how did you get into uh, to, to making beer? Have you always been home brewing? Was that something that you kind of picked up um, once this idea kind of started? Well, back in the nineties, we used to uh, we used to have some uh, like homebrew parties here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was back then when, when we were doing probably, you know, a lot of extract brewing and all our friends were doing, uh, extract brewing with kits and things like that. So, so we started, you know, that, that's the right. way everybody starts, you know? Um, and, and that was a lot of fun and, and we had some parties and, and, uh, some debauchery here and there. And, and, uh, uh, and so when the idea came to us, you know, again, we were like, okay, then we started brewing like crazy again. <laughs> right. And, uh, uh. And, and, uh, and my son at that time, he was uh, a college guy and he's into the sciences and everything. Mm-hmm. And boy, man, he just hits all of his numbers, you know, and, and, and now we're at the point where, you know, you know we're worrying about, uh, you know, uh, water chemistry and, and, right. and really trying to nail it down. Um, and, and. You know, it started off the, the way everybody else does. <laughs> I, I don't know that everybody does that now. I think that they're like it's gotten so big now that there's probably people that like don't even don't even homebrew before they plop themselves into a commercial brewery. You know, maybe they get into it as a bartender or something, and then kind of one one afternoon, like, oh, can I come? Can, yeah. I, can I come help out in the brew house? And then like, I think it's like. Uh, the world has has shifted so much in the last uh, decade here in Cincinnati uh, that um, there's a whole there's a whole different collection of paths to get into yeah. to, to beer, and I, I which think, is fun. Yeah, when you're like you know older and you were home brewing in the in the 80s or 90s, um, you were doing it because you couldn't get good beer, right. you know, uh, and you wanted to try to something different or you wanted really hoppy stuff or right. what what seemed back then really hoppy, right? And uh, uh, and so you, you, uh, uh, and now there's breweries everywhere. You know, if you want good beer, you just, you, you go to a brewery, you know, right. there's, unless you're really into the craft of it, um, you know, do, do people really get into that? And, yeah. and, uh, so those are questions, you know, that, that, that you probably have, or I have also, you know, when we go to our local homebrew stores, you know, like right. how's business, <laughs> Right. <laughs> we need you guys to stay well, in business. Well, the problem is there aren't that many local homebrew stores anymore because of that, <laughs> you know, I, uh, or they've all become breweries yeah, too. Yeah, Paradise has, has shifted and they don't sell homebrew supplies out in Anderson anymore. Uh, Listerman still does, but, uh, you don't quote me on this, anybody, but I don't know how much longer that's going to last either. It's oh, just, God, you know, I hope I, they stick around. I, 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 we, we, that's where we've got, we still get stuff there. You a know, lot of people love do love them so much, mm-hmm. but you know, when you, when you look at how much, how much money a tap room makes versus a, uh, uh, you know, a bucket of extract. I, I don't know the numbers, but it probably makes sense to have, you know, right. some extra tap room space. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, when you go in there, you know, and, and then there's it's, just people with passion, right. You know, and yeah. it's, it's, uh, you, uh, you know, you walk in that back room, you're milling stuff and the guy walks in and you're like, what are you brewing? You what know, and every, every, that's the way it is. And that's the you, excitement of it. You hope that, that beer is one of those industries that can kind of, um, ignore some of the other trends that are happening in other industries. I mean, Amazon took over shopping and is killing the idea of what a, a store means. You know, my kids, they've never been to a mall. I don't think <laughs> they don't, they don't know what malls are because they don't really <laughs> exist anymore. You got to go over to Kenwood and like, uh, 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 that's happening with a lot of stores and a lot of things. It's just, it's easier and it's usually cheaper somehow to just jump on Amazon and, and click a button and then it's at your house and you know, tomorrow. And I, I hope that all of these different aspects of the beer industry, including home brewing, doesn't become that where, Oh, it's just easier just to get online and order, order my home brew supplies and have them dropped off on, on my doorstep. You know, that, that connection that you have with people, like you said, when, when you walk into the store and there's somebody, you know, just kind of staring at the malt and you, know, just, you can see him kind of racking his brain and, or her, her brain. And, uh, like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, what are you making? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Or, you know, but, the, but then there's also the, the, the fun of, you know, ah, oh, well, they don't have this kind of hop, you know, or, yeah. or they don't have the right yeast or whatever. So then you, you got to go to the chart, you know, and you look down and you say, oh, okay, what's well, complimentary yeah. to that, you know, yeah. or, or you're like, ah, screw it. You know, I got like, uh, you start making Frankenstein IPAs and, and uh, you know, where the, you got a whole bunch of extra ingredients all over the place, you know, and you just throw that together. And uh, it, it, it maybe gives 
more value to the places that are still around, you know, the, the Listermans or uh, whoever they may be in, in, you know, whatever part of the world you're listening to this in, you know, I'm sure there's a homebrew store and uh, it gives that place so much value because there aren't other places like it anymore <laughs> you know it's right, like the, that yeah. one it's like record shops you know when record shops almost went extinct and then you know everybody's was still kicking and still doing their thing it became like this hub of somewhere you can go to be like here's people that kind of get what i am I'm into and, right uh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, kind of on that same note uh, there's a lot of breweries in town uh the, the lovely folks uh, down at uh, Channel 9 did a great article uh, about a month ago that is titled, uh, Does Cincinnati Have Too Many Breweries? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm assuming you guys think the answer to that is a resounding no. no. <laughs> how, do, how, do you, how do you find your place within uh, a beer scene that, that has grown exponentially, that uh, some people think has everything for everybody? How do you find your place within that and, and be special? Um, well, uh, you know, we, we agreed, uh, our business model is just this community and, and we just want to, you know, uh, open our doors and, and, uh, and try to make really great beer and have a really great environment, but we're really doing it, um, you know, for Glendale, uh, surrounding communities. And, and, and so, you know, that's our, that's our world right there. And, and so, uh, you know, some of the challenges that, that, um, questions that we had early on were okay what are you going to do about parking and we said, well we're not <laughs> right you know we're going to be walkable and there's a there's a municipal lot just across the street um uh, you, you know we it would have been easy to just take our backyard and, and say okay this is all parking now and then right. pave over everything and 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 so uh you know what we're trying to do is is is, is a place like we loved living here you know and and now uh we want to love you know still being here we want other people to it wants it's a place that that we would go and 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 be welcome at and and stay and and uh and i saw and i don't know if it was on that um article but there's only two communities that didn't have a brewery one of them was glendale and i think one of them was wyoming or something and right now we're i don't know if wyoming's getting one but they now are. we're filling <laughs> so we're filling in those <laughs> gaps so we can just go wherever and go to a nice brewery and yeah, the neighborhood brewery, and yeah. and uh, you, you know it's a, a very similar thing uh, when you travel to England and and, uh, and and some of these other places, you know, and you say, well, that's 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 my neighborhood brewery, right? You know, and and uh, that's where we want to be. So, you, no desire to have your beer sitting on shelves all across the city and dominating and becoming the next Rheingeist and None. <laughs> right, you know, distribution is uh, yeah. No, we don't anticipate doing anything like that. It, it, I mean, there's a lot of places that uh, when when I talked to them when they were kind of planning or when they were opening or even once they opened. Uh, said that and said, oh, you know, it's, uh, I don't think so. It's just Tapper and you know, We don't have any desire to distribute. And then a year in, they're installing a big canning line in the back. And, you know, it's like, oh, you, did you change? Or was this always kind of in the back of your head? Uh, you can tell uh, because of what the place is that mm -hmm. – this is what the place is like there's you know there's not a whole lot of room to grow <laughs> other than maybe some extra little fermentation capacity and things like that to, right. uh, get some variety kind of rolling but um other than that this this is what it is and this unless you decide to go open up some big warehouse and call it the, uh, the, the Glendale house yeah well yeah, <laughs> right there, there's sense. so many of those all right <laughs> you know like you know just guys that were you, which is more which power is fine. to them, yeah, right? Yeah, fine. more we power need to them. But, the, but they're like but. swinging for the fences, like you know, right out of the gates, you know. And it's a huge, huge environment, you know, and and uh, gigantic kettles and gigantic fermenters, and and, that, and that's cool. Um, but yeah, that's just not what we're all about. And, and and so it's it's the idea of craft and 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 craft not only just in the brewery but in the space and in the environment that you're in. What does what does craft mean to you? That word. Uh, so I've always joked that, you know, um, Lor well, Lori's very crafty. She's a quilter. She's, she's a sewer. She makes some very inspirational things. Shirt um, you're wearing. <laughs> shirt I'm wearing, correct. <laughs> um, uh, and, and I always said, you know, I was supposed to be a carpenter, you know, right. and, and that's, I just love that work, you know, and I, I'm like a, uh, uh, 
After my fence, I've learned I was not supposed to be a carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, but you know, uh, building things and and uh, and learning from those mistakes and and uh, and but you know, taking your time to to craft things and sometimes out of nothing or right. or leftover materials, you know, uh, putting that edge just on something and, and and spending the time to make it just right, you know, that's that's craft. Uh, to me and and so you know brewing same way and and you know all brewers do that right They're all they you know worry about the smallest details do you think do you think that they all do that because like i i've i've gone to some places and I, I'm, we'll say not locally you know or, or no we'll, we'll call brew dog we'll call brew dog out there they're kind of local and they're fun to, to poke at uh like you walk in and it's it's like a machine it's a uh, like it doesn't feel like there's somebody sitting there thinking about the craft of it. And I'm sure there is somebody along that, that chain is, is crafting, but yeah. I don't know that everybody is. <laughs> and like, I, I worry, I not worry. Cause I think that as, as an industry keeps growing, like it's, uh, it's okay to have places that are uh, different and maybe not what you want, but as it keeps growing, I think that there are definitely more of those places that, that pop up that kind of, you walk in and you're like, oh, this is, this is not what I fell in love with when I fell in love with craft beer. This is, this is something else. Yeah. Um, and then you come into places like this and it's, you know, the, uh, the other end of the spectrum where it's all craft and you're like, oh. <laughs> it gives, it gives this so much more value just because you can see that other thing. So in your face sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, but it, but it has to be fun, you know, and, and it has to be challenging and it has to be hard uh, uh for it to all be worth it and and we you know when we, early on in the process you know we 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 made a promise to each other uh that this would be fun and and you know if it stopped being fun, has it still been fun throughout the whole process you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> yes but <laughs> but, but we love <laughs> but we love the creative process you know we love building things and and, and uh uh and, and sometimes things come out of necessity you know like oh we don't have enough money to do it that way right. but we have these leftover materials or we have you know and i'm saying that like all of our beers are going to be like oh you're going to be perfect no you know like that's the fun of it is yeah. to be uh experimental and uh you know we were talking about listermans you know and and uh uh you know, some of their beers that are just, you know, they're, they're here and gone, you know, because you know, someone had a crazy idea, right. you know, and I just love that, you know, I just, uh, to just go in and say, Oh, you know, that was so creative. <laughs> it's, it's one of my favorite things about a small brewery too, is that, you know, that when you come in and you try a beer, chances are when you're here in three months and you do the same thing and you drink the same beer, it's probably going to be a little different yeah. and it's probably going to be, it's going to be tweaked and it's going to be hopefully improved. It's going to just be this constant evolution and this constant change and watching that and experiencing that is, is part of what I love about sitting in a tap room and having a beer. Like it's that, uh, that, that experience that, uh, uh, some people, um, maybe you know don't appreciate when they're just you're, they're walking into uh, a udf and grabbing whatever that macro beer off the shelf is that they, it's the same every time they buy it and you, know, you don't get that that story as you're as you're drinking right yeah it's what, it's what i love one of the things that i love well i think we're all striving for consistency you know and and uh, uh in anything that we do but uh, the fun kind of comes with, uh, well, we're going to try this this time, or we're going to make this adjustment, and and uh, and then and then sometimes it's like, well, we'll see what we end up with. Right, right. I mean, that's it, that, again, it's supposed to be fun. <laughs> it's right, yeah, it's supposed to, to be, be fun. fun. Right, yeah, yeah. Like, well, that's this new stuff, you know, uh, and uh, so a, a question that I used to, or we used to always ask when when the show started that we kind of got away from for a while, uh, and I've been thinking about a lot, and I don't, I don't really know how to uh how to frame it the perfect way yet but uh it was what is your measure of success uh what is what is the thing that lets you know that this is is working or has worked or will work like what is that what is that defining thing you want to think about that honey, think or? about that yeah it's just looking around and seeing people enjoying themselves coming back um, you know, spreading the word that, oh, they had a really good time at this place. Um, and they'll bring back people with them. 
I think that I've, I've given people, I've heard, I've heard that answer before and I sometimes give people a little crap for it because it's, it's almost too easy. Like that's, I mean, you're serving beer. You know, people are going to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> but not, but see, the thing is they're not always asking about the beers. They're asking about the pizzas too. That's true. That's true. And you know, we're giving them both. So, you know, seeing if they like all of it together. Well, yeah, I mean, the, and that's, there are some places where uh, people go in and they're like, oh, you know, the beer's fine, but, oh, the food, oh, oh, eat before you go, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or, or vice versa. You, uh, oh, that place, the, the food is incredible. Uh, the beer's, the beer's fine, but the food, oh, you have to go there for the food or, or you know, oh, the space has so much personality to it, but that's about it. You know, like it's uh, trying to get all those things to connect is, uh, is, is hard to do. Right. Um, and but, then, but how long do you go? how many times do you go to like a big macro brewery, you right. know, and, and, and they're just trying to get guys, uh, people beers through the line. Yeah. Right? You know, the guy doesn't even have any time to talk to you about yeah. the beers. Um, so our measure of success would be being able to talk to people about what it is that we like and, and learning things about people, meeting people. Right. You know, I think that's what beer brings people together. Yeah, right? it does. It, it, and it brings, it, it brings good people together. I'm, I'm continually like, uh, just, shocked sometimes at how good beer people are that they you know look out for each other and they care about each other and it becomes these these little community hubs within a community of the space that you uh you you meet friends and you you make friends and uh yeah it's it's not the still happens it's not the bar scene is it you know it's something different and and uh and and right so you like beer people we like beer people um so yeah maybe it is easy to to make them happy but uh those are the things that it's we're still gonna, a good measure of success. Yeah, though. sure. Yeah, hey, is everybody happy? <laughs> Scored a ten today. <laughs> <laughs> One grumpy guy in the corner. No. <laughs> right. How to build a fence is where you get. Is is there anything that makes you nervous about where beer is right now? I mean, beer. Uh, it's it's strange. Like you know, we, we saw this proliferation of seltzers for a while, and people were confused about what they wanted to drink, or maybe still are confused about what they want to drink. Uh, craft beer is uh, definitely in a a kind of a weird in between stage right now where uh, we don't really know what's happening with it. And uh, some places are terrified by that. Usually kind of the bigger guys that are trying to sell beer across the country. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But uh, I, I I have talked to some smaller guys too, that are still kind of nervous about what it means for, um, for the local industry. Well, I think as, as long as people are still pushing the envelope and, and trying new stuff, you know, five years ago where we talked about... From the drinker's perspective? Yeah, or? you know, where we... And from the crafter's perspective, were we talking about hazy IPAs, uh, you know, five years ago? Right. You know, were we talking more about like uh, uh, thiols and, and things like that? So there's things coming, you know, up, you know, what is the next big thing? Uh, you know, and everybody has to offer seltzers from here and you there. You don't have to. Yeah, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that is a, uh, that's a, that's a good question. You know, that's a good debate, right? You know, do you make beers that only you want to make or do you making beers that, that you know people want to drink? Right. Um, or finding that balance between the two. You right, know, trying yeah. to find that, that perfect piece where like, yes, you know, when somebody walks in your door, you want them to be as happy as possible. Yeah. And if, Everybody that's walking in the door says, oh, man, I just, just want hazy IPAs. Yeah. At some you guys, point, you, you should guys probably make no a hazy seltzers. IPA. <laughs> <laughs> if if that's what all your customers are saying. <laughs> but there is also, there's something to this idea that you don't have to, you don't have to be what people want you to be that you can, you can kind of define what you are and then let the people that want that find you. Um, but there's, again, it's a very fine line between the two. <laughs> right, right. Trying to, trying to balance that out. Well, I ask you that, uh, Andrew, what, uh, what are you seeing out there? And, and, and you're out there visiting breweries and, and, uh, some 60 or so breweries in, in this area that, that, that you've been to. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what makes you nervous uh, about uh, the beer scene? I I don't I don't I'm not nervous about much. I think that um especially with us here in Cincinnati, I don't think we have a lot of breweries that are so big that they are going to feel this crunch that some of the other places. I mean, uh the news dropped this morning uh gives you an idea when we're recording this, but uh the anchor is is ceasing operations and they're going to sell the brew. Like that's that's sad. 
but it's not shocking. You know, this is the brewery that was trying to sell their beer across the entire country and was owned by some big giant conglomerate of beer sadness. <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not shocking, uh, but uh, we don't have a lot of that happening here in Cincinnati. You know, our, our we, we have a couple, you know, Ryan Geist is obviously big, but uh, they're still extremely local focused. They're not trying to, send their beer all across the country you know uh, maybe that was the plans of some of the other guys at one point but they've spent the last few years trying to shift the that idea and trying to create more tap room space and trying to drive more people into the tap room versus buying your beer in a udf you know like it, it I'm, I'm not i'm not I may, maybe i should be but i'm not i'm not nervous about a lot uh i don't like seeing people uh been to the will of the customers as much as they are. I don't, I don't think every brewery should have a full bar. I don't think every brewery should uh, offer seltzer. I don't think every brewery should have food. I think that there should be more opportunities to find places that are, that are different. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, a lot of places feel the same. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I got to think like when you first started this podcast and, and you know, Lori and I going out and, and you get in your, your, check marks you know yeah. at, at all the beer places that you've been at and uh you, you know and each one of them's different you know and, and you're like oh i've been to that place and you know and we were just talking about uh, you know twin oast uh up in northern ohio and you know god we got to make it there you know and uh uh so you, you, i i think that uh um you, you know that was a lot of exciting stuff going on you know yeah. when everything was new and and uh, and then maybe went through a period of where everything was a gigantic uh, hard hardscapes and and uh, you can hardly hear yourself talk in some of them because yeah uh, and, and but then some of that's coming back so uh, well yeah and I, and I think that it going the pendulum swinging so far one direction kind of enables it to kind of foster the other side heavier uh, <clears throat> after we kind of get through that period of time you know it lets people like remember oh like i this is this is fine but i really want this other thing this complete opposite thing so then you start getting places that open up that are that opposite thing and um i like that <laughs> i like I like variety <laughs> good um Let's talk about kind of the, the space um, itself. Uh, we mentioned earlier, it's converted house. Tell people kind of about how this is all kind of put together and what they can expect when they, uh, when they walk in the door. Sure, so, um, so we kept all the walls here. Uh, we tried to keep the vibe the same. Uh, you know, it's got that same, uh, you know you're in an old house yeah, uh, when you're here. Is, yeah. yeah, each room is, is distinct and, and uh, has some element of what it used to be so yeah. right now we're sitting in the in the tap room and it used to be the kitchen and uh and and i i just got gotten done you know making cabinets making my own cabinets you know and, and uh building a center island and and uh in fact this bar uh it was our dining room table at one time but then but then it was also uh our kitchen island mm -hmm. yeah. and now it's the bar so this is the third life for this uh big hunk of wood um and, and so throughout the house uh, you know there's, there's elements of what it used to be and and, uh, and it's uh, supposed to be um that you know that you're in a house right, right. and 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 then in the for front foyer room is still kind of as awkward as it always has been <laughs> you know like why do they have foyers and houses i don't know <laughs> you know place to shake off the snow or right. dust and and uh and our front room is a, uh, it was always a, a library room. Uh, we built bookcases there and we love books and, and uh, you know, invite people to come and, and uh, sit down and read a book and, and uh, comfortable chairs and, and uh, stay for, we have some chairs in there that we call three beer chairs. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, obviously easy to just stay for three beers right. in one of those chairs. Um, and then our dining room, probably the, 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 the most changed. It was just a big open space, and now there's a couple bathrooms in there and, and now a couple booths uh, 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 with furniture that we built with a friend of ours, Bill Dirksen. Yeah. And, uh, and what else we got there, uh, honey? You know, and, you, and then we have a, a, a generous outside space um, that we're trying to make as lush as possible. Um, the brew house uh, is new. Yep. Uh, brew house is new, but you know it looks like uh, the same like as the garage, here. which now we call the barn. Uh, and uh, 
the barn was um, was built from an old barn that was much bigger that was on this property for you know hundred years ago, and uh, uh, and that's uh, that's the space. <laughs> There's a, a kitchen in the back. You guys mentioned pizza. Uh, this is a pizza is a big oh, part correct, of what correct, this yeah. is. Is yeah. a spot where people can come and eat local food <laughs> you know this uh, uh again very much the personality of what glendale is supposed to be is this kind of uh local community first thing um which uh, you can get a hot dog at udf i guess but it's not quite the same <laughs> <I've heard. laughs> uh, but that's kind of off the back too and you guys uh, did something is really cool the the pizza oven is sitting inside of a silo that kind of sits off of the back of the kitchen you can see it when you're sitting out there in the beer garden and it's just it just looks awesome Awesome. <laughs> it is it is such an every little detail about the space you can tell that somebody who uh, who, who cares about it but then that, like enjoys that that aspect of kind of creating a space or kind of uh, giving it personality or giving it something that uh, is unexpected or um, different uh, you, you can tell that and you can feel it all over the place which again there's a lot of places that have popped up that just don't have you know the, there was a, a joke going around on the internet uh, a couple of years ago maybe where it was the uh, brewery starter kit and it was a picture of a picnic table <laughs> and uh, edison light bulb and the stool if everybody who's been to a brewery knows about the stool that metal stool that everybody has that is really uncomfortable yeah. and it was the the brewery starter kit and like that's there's, 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 there's a one lot of beer those. stool <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> but but we've come so accustomed to that being what a brewery is that uh when you come into a place that has this other kind of vibe or this other personality, it is just so welcome and uh, uh, feels very good. Well, that, that makes us feel good that we're getting that message across. Yes, thank you. So we have to ask the big question. Uh, opening date. Uh, do you guys have something you're shooting for uh, that you are willing to talk about? Yeah. yeah well, we're, we're <laughs> shooting telling for, everybody. Yeah. Put an ish at the end, whatever you say. <laughs> Mid-August-ish. Uh People have to be getting excited. Uh, you guys um, opened up a, like a founders club kind of thing where people could buy a t-shirt and uh, get um, kind of first dibs at you know some beer naming stuff or you know recipe ideas that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and those people uh, were kind of the first kind of fans of this place, and that was. Uh, a long time ago, well, two years. Yeah. <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> so I imagine that they are just chomping at the bit to get in here and uh, and christen the place finally. Yes, they yeah, are. Yeah. Well, you know, we we have our fair amount of people just dropping by, and and, uh, and that's nice actually. You know, we we enjoy. You know, if someone's just in the neighborhood and you, and you stop by and we're out there we're working. Tour. Yeah, we love you know love talking about the space and and uh, love talking about beer and, and stuff. So yeah, just. Uh, um, uh, stop by check us out you know beep as you go by <laughs> but it's it's a one of my favorite things about kind of breweries that are in small towns or uh kind of a tight-knit neighborhood is some of that you know uh people just kind of wandering away hey, well, how are things going you know you guys you know like that uh uh you guys open yet? You know. Yeah, <laughs> just right. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just you know, kind of like staring over <laughs> yeah. the, you know, and waiting for us to. Hey, what's going on? Come on in, check it out. Um, I imagine that the, uh, the 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 community is going to be just absolutely thrilled when this place opens. It's uh, it's it's so needed for this 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 neighborhood and for this uh, this community. It's man is gonna you're gonna be busy i think yeah I, I, we were we uh well we love local music and and uh, so we were up at the at the green watching a couple of our favorite bands the other day and uh we saw so many people and, and the the saying of the day was uh w people just yelling at us going we're ready <laughs> right and Lori was just like well we're ready too <laughs> what have been some of the the biggest hurdles in getting this open that maybe uh, maybe you expected, but maybe you didn't expect to. Like, what have been some of the things that... Mm, well, trying to open during a pandemic, I guess. Prices going up. Um, you know, just all the things. It's it's like a complete renovation, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Taking down the walls and the ceiling and having to put it back up double and, you know, painting. So it, it's, you know, it's a lot of work. It's hopefully going to pay off. But, yeah, it's all of the all those things. Yeah, just the price of materials was uh, was shocking. Uh, you know, when you're paying for a, a four dollar two by four, and then all of a sudden you're paying eight or nine bucks for right. it. You know, 
Uh, but you know, what can you do? It's, it's, that's when you're building and that's when you got to buy it and, and forget about it, I guess. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to forget about some of those things. <laughs> <laughs> well, Every time you sit there and you look at, you know, the, the wall, oh man, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Throwing up the drywall in this stuff in here was, uh, was tough, you know, but five eighths inch, uh, drywall and, and, uh, two layers thick and, and, uh, hoisting that up to the ceiling it's, and sticking it's it there. all so beautiful though. Like it's done. Uh, it doesn't feel like, I mean, it feels like it's just been this way forever, I guess is the, the best way that I can put it. Like it just feels, feels natural and it feels warm and it feels inviting. And um, you guys just knocked it out of the park. I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. This place is fantastic. Well, thanks for yeah, that. Thank you. I think, uh, I think people are going to be, be really, really excited. Uh, yeah. Not not just Glenn. I think everybody's going to be excited. People that kind of drive from a couple neighborhoods over, from you know a different part of town, that are just just looking for something like this. It's uh, it's exciting. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, like Lori, she can't stand it when something's busted out. You know, so she just does a U turn. You know, like oh, Done. you're putting that window in today. <laughs> nah, I'm out of here. <laughs> Is that the actual outside right there? <laughs> Uh, let's let's talk about beer specifics a little bit. Uh, are there any beer styles that you tend to kind of lean towards? Some that you kind of avoid just because you don't like to drink them or you don't like to brew them or what, whatever uh, reason that you might have? I, yeah, I don't think so. Um, um, I like all kinds of beers and, uh, you know, IPAs and stouts. And, and we're really looking forward to the fall when we can, can we turn, it, turn it up on some stouts. Um, and, you know, just get that crisp fall weather, you know, and, and have a nice coffee stout or, uh, uh, well, we, we're working on one now. We're trying to do a, a coconut macadamia nut. Ooh, uh, that sounds good. Yeah. I'm a sucker for, for maple in beer, so like a maple stout. Oh, and, in the spring we do a, well, we didn't this year, but maple, we, instead of using water, we use maple sap in the beer. Ooh. Yep. So we got uh, we got some maple sap from uh, what's the name of that uh, those those guys old Dutch hops old Dutch hops oh, yeah, yeah. Out, out, way out there and uh, uh, so yeah we just uh, fill up a boil kettle with uh, with uh, no water just uh, just that maybe boil it down a little bit get some of the sugar content concentrated mm -hmm. uh, and then that just makes a, just a a, a wonderful. Uh, uh, maple stout. No, yeah. oh, that sounds and, good. Yeah, and and then I think our first year we did it a few years ago. Uh, we actually put bark in it. You know, <laughs> don't know. <if> <laughs> it made, it, made it very <laughs> tanny. <laughs> 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 it's about experimentation, exactly, trying things. Right, yeah, <laughs> it didn't work out so well. Um, in fact, I think we had that uh, aging. We had that aging, and we just had it. That last bottle. Yeah, just uh, uh, my son was in town uh, a few weeks ago, and. Uh, and we had this old bottle that had been sitting in the back of the fridge. And then we're like, let's try that and see. And uh, it was really good. That sounds awesome. <laughs> After a number of years, it was still good. Yeah, I, the, I don't homebrew at all anymore. But I remember um, the one of the last batches of beer that I did, uh, I tried to make a, um, uh, it was a coffee and vanilla stout. And... Um, made it bottled it and tried it and i was like oh it's just not not really as good as i was expecting it to be and I'm like, that's fine and then you know a couple days later I tried another one and i tried it again and it just went on for you know a few months until mm -hmm. i was down to the last bottle and i grabbed it and i opened it up and i poured it and it was perfect yeah <laughs> right like, oh, yeah i drank all that too soon <laughs> sometimes well unless it's an ipa like time just right. seems to fix a lot of things you know? yeah it's uh it's hard to be patient sometimes <laughs> right right yeah we were making a a, a a cherry beer um it was a cherry rice beer and uh and that it just as it as it went on it just got more red and and uh and and you could taste the cherry a lot better mm -hmm. you know after a while and, and uh yeah that was really fun it's sometimes it's fun trying to find that window it's like oh it's good it's good oh it's great it's great and then oh it's getting bad i gotta drink it all <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah well we have we have a friend of ours uh, uh, owns a brewery uh, a brewer for a long time in uh, uh england and uh, so cask ales mm -hmm. are huge you know and that and that's an art form there oh, yeah. and we would love to just start doing that in fact he wants to come over maybe we can get a program going uh, with Ian and and 
Uh, but you know, that is, you know, you got to, it's a firkin and you got to, you got to tap it on Thursday and you have to drink it on, on Sunday. But a lot of it is, op- you know, to the tavern owner of like when it's ready yeah. and, and uh, you know, it's not ready yet, you know, and, and how long is too, too long. And, and uh, it adds an, it adds an extra level of craft and an extra level of fun to everything. <laughs> like right. I, yeah. I, I love yeah. that. That's a, uh, rock bottom used to always have cask beer on like even well into their life like like recent years they they still had a cask beer that you could go in there and, and get there's not a lot of places that do that anymore oh, right yeah. well you know you have to get used to the low carbonation you know and and uh, and it's and served warm sure and uh and pump it out of the cask and stuff like that but yeah that's that's uh, we would love that to be uh, phase two or phase three to get that kind of program going. Oh, I would love that too. I uh, submit my vote for that. <laughs> uh, when you started drinking craft beer, I assume you were not always a craft beer drinker. There had to be some kind of moment where it all clicked and you discovered craft beer. Do you remember what that was, what beer it was? or The beer that I drank before craft beer? No, the one oh. that, that kind of made that Turned switch in. or kind of... Oh, yeah. um, well, my dad would brewed. Um, you know, way back uh, when well, Jimmy Carter, yeah, yeah. So, so I guess I, you know, sampled some of his stuff, and it always seemed very, you know, had that had that micro right <laughs> microbrewery taste to it, you know, which was probably you know overly hopped or something like that, you know, um, before you were used to it. Uh, um, I, I think I think IPAs, you know, and and uh, you know, so I think we, we'll, you know, we'd go out same as anybody else and, and you'd have a few beers and then and then i was like wow well, i think i might be having too many beers you know and so i started drinking ipas to kind of just slow myself down right <laughs> you know because i you know if it's you know bitter enough and and uh uh and this is before um a lot of the dry hopping and everything right. you know ipas were just more more bitter and everything um and and uh uh and I said, yeah, this is, and you start running into other people and like, oh, try this IPA and this, and this IPA. And, 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 uh, and so those things were, you know, you're really tasting a lot more. Um, uh, and then you're getting more of that different kinds of hops that you like. And then, and then um, uh, the aromas, you know, and then, and then you know, different hopping uh, type of uh, uh, strategies. It's, uh, you know, don't remember the specific beers, but I can remember moments where like you smell something like you, the first time you smell, you know, a peach that comes from a hop not from peaches. Like, and you smell like, man, I kind of get this little peach thing. And I'm like, yeah, that's the hops. And yeah, then like, oh yeah, my God. Right, yeah. <laughs> and then you like, and I, yeah, with like, me, I think it was those, grapefruit. Those little moments like that where it like clicks and it's like, oh my God, like there's so much to, each ingredient in beer that brings so many different things that opens up this whole world of mixing and matching and combinations and um you know we just before craft beer you just you didn't get a lot of that i mean there were imports and stuff like that they were doing some fun stuff but mm. uh just before craft beer it was just kind of this bland world <laughs> it's like, you know in the wizard of oz where the, the color comes in the picture and all of a sudden it's like oh Oh, there's so much more here than I than I ever thought you know that was possible. And Lori, did you have a was you what was your turning point inflection point beer? I'm not an IPA drinker. I don't know. I like lagers. I like the the more smooth beers. Um, you're just trying different things like that, the pilsners and the the lagers and just. What was your What was yours? Mm-hmm. I I don't. So, I uh, when I turned uh, twenty one, Mount Carmel was already um, making beer. So, like, I've just always kind of had craft beer. Like it was just it was it was never a thought that I would be drinking something else because it didn't make sense to drink anything else. Mm-hmm. It just wasn't as good. So, I don't remember there being a specific moment. I rem- again, I remember moments along that journey. I remember you know the first time I sat down at a brewery and had a beer, and uh, you know remember. You know, the first time that we uh, we took a road trip somewhere and then spent the day just going to different breweries and trying different things and trying flights and splitting flights with each other and just trying all kinds of stuff. Like, I remember those moments, but I don't really don't remember specific beer. Like, I, I just feel like it's always been there. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, I guess is a good thing. It's, I, I'm sure that's kind of the way just about any craft beer drinker that's, you know, 
in their early 20s now. That's kind of the way it is. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, there's just always or there's always been Ryan Geist. <laughs> there's right, always been yeah. Mad Tree. It was just that was the the thing. Which is which is fun. I, I I'm I'm happy to see that. But. Yeah, maybe maybe uh, on second thought, like circling back uh, to that question to me um, uh, of uh, of finding out that they're you know instead of like the college beers you mm-hmm. know and finding out going going across the pond you know where there's neighborhood pubs and then you have your first pint of Guinness and I still remember when. Uh, Golly, you know, you there there weren't very many bars that even served Guinness yeah. around here, you oh, know, because yeah. you had to get the, the special setup and everything, and and uh, uh, you know, so maybe you know, and, and then actually having like low carbonated warm beer, yeah. Well, <laughs> you're Guinness, like, oh, this is different. Guinness was always a fun one for me in college because uh, it. it low carbonation it's got the nitro so you you know you don't you're not burping it up all night long and uh low abv it's you know like 4.5 percent something like that so you you can drink more of them than somebody that's sitting there pounding a six percent uh something yeah and so like it it was definitely a go-to for me i drank a lot of guinness (laughs) but you know that's uh the import side i think was um way way more important kind of at that early stage of of craft beer i also live in fairfield i've always been close to jungle gems there was always a good beer selection even if most of it was imported versus craft beer um it was not that imported beer isn't craft beer you guys don't send me any emails you know what i mean Uh, (laughs) and uh i've always had like just great options of things to try and i've always i've always loved trying new things be it food or beer so it's just always experimenting, yeah. which I think is an important part of uh, drinking beers, trying new things and just always, you know, kind of pushing your palate to new spots and seeing what somebody's idea of something is. And um, even with super traditional styles, always trying people's new spin on it that they think is the right one and you know, kind of seeing what people are doing with it, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again fun it's the fun of it <laughs> yeah <laughs> especially you know like regional things too and, and i used to say that about when we go out of town you know let's try that brewery oh yeah because you're drinking that brewery's water and and so you you start a, a brewery and you're like oh are we going to do ro water or are we going to take the local water and then and then we're going to do stuff to it uh and, and we're in the second camp well i mean that's all that's also the advantage of having a spot where you don't have this uh, uh, this desire to grow outside of what this is. If you're if you're opening a place and you're like, yeah, eventually we're we're gonna expand. Eventually we might have multiple locations. Eventually we're gonna you know, there's a chance we'll be making beer across the country. <laughs> you know, that maybe you need to, to get your water stripped down to, to nothing before you uh, right yeah <laughs> you build it back up. You're like, well, that's not you know <laughs> this is what the water tastes like in this area. Yeah. You know. Uh, I, I hope people remember that at the end of the day, this is still just beer and it is supposed to be something that is fun and is exciting and uh, that you enjoy. Like there's, there's a lot of people that I think as an industry grows, they kind of lose some of that joy around it. And uh, I don't want people to lose that. That's, that's what makes it so great. Yeah. That's a beautiful thought, man. Well, thank you guys for uh, taking some time out and and kind of letting people know what uh, what this place is all about, what it's going to be all about when those doors open up. I will uh, I will definitely be here. You'll you'll see me bellied up to this bar quite a few times, I'm sure. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. come thanks on. for thanks for coming out. And, oh, and not a problem. Doing this. Uh, is there anything you want people to know that you think that they don't know after we uh, we rolled through? Uh, well, we covered a lot of ground, so I think uh, I think uh, I can't think of anything. Lori, you're no. parting. Words of wisdom. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will put links in the show notes for social media. Go follow them on all of their social media. Get all of the latest updates on uh, what's happening with the, the brewery, when it's opening, all of that stuff. You'll, you'll hear it there first. And, um, and, and follow them and, and send them some love and uh, let them know that uh, uh, you guys are going to be really busy. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, make sure you get lots of beer stocked up before that opening day, because uh, there's going to be lots of thirsty people lined up to uh, to drink it. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, there's, uh, it's been a little while since a brewery opened up and then had to close their doors to uh, fill the beer back up because people drank it all. But you guys might be the next one that uh, that hits that. To do that. <laughs> 
<laughs> working that's on a, our inventory. Yeah. Yeah. Stock up. Stock up on lots of beer. And when you think you have enough, make, make a little bit more. more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm excited. Uh, thank you guys for listening to the show. Thank you for uh, for supporting as we go through lots of goofy little breaks and stuff like we just had. Um, we're not going anywhere. We'll be back next week. In fact, uh, we will definitely be back next week with another fun episode. We're going to be recording live from Fibonacci, which might be the one brewery in town that is the closest kind of vibe to you guys other than the fact that they have goats and chickens. Yeah. You guys We've don't have any goats there. and chickens. Yeah, we love that place. <laughs> yeah, we love we those guys. Uh, I think uh, the first time that Bob and Betty come in here, I think that they're going to uh, groan that they did not think of some of the stuff that you guys have incorporated <laughs> into this place because it's very, very them. It's very much their personality. But uh, we'll be live there. Uh, we, As of recording this, it already happened, so you can't come see it live, but you can listen to next week's episode and you can hear it there. And I'm trying to remember which button is which on here. I think this is ah, my, mash them all. That's not it. It's <laughs> it is this one. There we go. We'll be back next week. If you guys like this show or any of the stuff that I do, uh, you can support by going to the gnarly slash support. Or if you're a local business or a local bar or a local brewer even, and you want to, you want to sponsor the show, uh, send me an email, go to uh, advertise at sensi brewcast.com and you can do that. And, uh, I would appreciate it. It helps, helps keep the lights on. It doesn't, there's no lights. Uh, there is a light. There's a red light that blinks when I'm recording. So you keep the red light blinking. If you, uh, <laughs> if you support Cincy <laughs> brewcast, it's the voice. It's a sense of craft. <laughs>